All right, page 480 in your textbooks. You did 2 through 34 the even. We did 2 through 16 at the end of the hour yesterday. Didn't have time to go over it. That's not on the quiz you're going to take here in a few minutes. And then the 18 to 34, which was the actual homework, that will be on the quiz here in just a few minutes, but all of it on the test in our next lesson. Books open to page 480. Number two, they wanted you to find the first four terms of that sequence. And um, it's not arithmetic, it's not geometric, it's just a sequence. And uh, they give us that rule. What do we call that rule class? Algorithm for the sequence. And what were the first four terms? Kendall? Um, three, twelve, twenty, seven, forty-eight. Good. Three, twelve, twenty-seven, forty-eight is correct. Number 14, they gave you a uh, recursive sequence. How do we know it's recursive besides the fact that, you know, it says it is? Um, Genesis? Well, alternating will do that, though this one does have a little bit of an alternation to it, but how do we know it's a recursive sequence? Abby? Um, it has the A to or sub N minus one. Good, that A sub N minus one, that means what class? Previous term. Previous term, right? That previous term notation on number four. What did you get for the first four terms of that sequence? Um, Genesis, you having trouble finding the work? Yes. Two, four, 480 to 481, 234 the evens. We did a 2 through 16 yesterday, and then we did the 18 to 34 for the homework. So number four, what did you get for your four, first four terms? Skipped four. Um, Audrey? Good. 3, 14, negative 8, 36. Again, no apparent rhyme or reason. It's definitely not arithmetic, definitely not geometric. Uh, but you start off with a 3, plug it in. Work it out, gives you 14. Plug in the 14, gives you negative 8. Plug in the negative 8, gives you 36. And it will end up alternating, but again, it's not alternating geometric, it's alternating recursive. Does anyone need to see 2 or 4 worked? All right, do you understand it now, Genesis? Because again, we will have problems like these on the test tomorrow. Any questions, 2 or 4? All right, number six, head off hand there, Michael. Uh, we do have an arithmetic sequence. And arithmetic means what again, Brandon? We're going to add the same thing over and over again. What do we call that value that we add over and over again, Michael? Term. Well, the term is the number, if the number's in the sequence, but that thing that keeps being added over and over again, Maddie? Common difference. On number six, what is the common difference? Back to Michael. Mm, negative eight. A negative eight. It looks like we're subtracting eight, and practically you could think that if you want to, or think negative eight for the common difference. What is that next term then? Back to Brandon. Negative 23. Uh, number 8, they want the, uh, a certain term in the arithmetic sequence. What's the formula we need to use to find a particular term in an arithmetic sequence, Michael? Um, Audrey, help. Good. So instead of times r to the n minus 1, it's plus d times n minus 1. And it wanted us to find specifically the 12th term, so a sub 12. They tell us that the first term in the sequence is 10, and the common difference is negative 4 thirds. Um, the n minus 1 ends up giving us an 11. So we're going to multiply, which is going to give us a weird fraction. Add the 10, what do we get for the 12th term? Negative 14, negative 14 thirds is correct. Or negative 4 and 2 thirds, or negative 4.6 repeating. How many have one of those for number 8? I have questions on that. Make sure we've got that formula memorized for tomorrow. Number 10, uh, we're finding the series of 5 from, I think it's 1 to 22. It helped to have the book with me. Yes. And uh, what kind of series is this? What's the name of this kind of series, Abby? Constant. A constant series, because all I have is a constant. And what's the formula I need to use to solve a constant series? Uh, C times n. C times n. Take the constant, multiply by the upper bound, and uh, I just get? 110. 110. How many out of 110 for number 10? Excellent. Number 12, we have a series of i squared from 1 to 12. And uh, what do we call this particular series, Genesis? Um, series of squares. 
series of consecutive squares. And what's the formula we use here? It's a lot more involved than just CN. Do you remember? Um, There we go. So we're going to take that upper bound, one greater, one more than doubled, divide it all by a six. Of course, I'll just cancel and get a two. And we end up getting what for our answer here on number 12? Uh, 546. Hmm. Kendall? Do you have 546 also? 650. Check the numbers plugged in. Did you use 12, 13, and 25? Look at your work. Obviously, if you did it all in the calculator, there's no way to check it. By the way, throwing a plug here on the test tomorrow, if you'll take the time to show this, if you plug something in wrong, you're going to get nearly all the credit. If I don't see any of this and I just see a wrong answer, I cannot give you anything. If you'll at least write this, I can give you at least half the credit. Okay, so the more you show me, the more partial credit there is. So I have no problem with just getting the answer as long as it's right. But you don't want to just get one wrong, okay? And end up losing all that credit. How many did have the 650? All right. Do either of you see where the mistake was? Where was it? I had an um, 11, Oh, you did N and minus one and then two. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that would do it. And apparently Genesis the same. Um, looking at number 14. It's another series of I squared, but this time it doesn't start at one. It starts at 12 and goes to 17. Michael, how do I handle this series? Um, you find 1 to 17 and then 1 to 11. Good. Find 1 to 17 and then find 1 up to almost this one, less than this. And uh, what do I do with those two amounts I'll get? Um, you do 17 times. Oh, you subtract them. Just subtract them away. So we'll do the 17, 18, and that ends up being, what, a 35 all over 6? We'll subtract 11, 12, and 23 all over 6. What did you end up with for your answer there on number 14, Michael? Negative 1,279. Not the negative. I'm not sure what happened there. It should have been a positive, 1,279. I think you subtracted this minus that instead of the other way around. Yeah, I just uh, put a negative in there. Okay, but uh, yeah, 1,279 is correct. How many have that for number 14? Does anyone need to see it worked out, or we feel like that's enough work shown you see what should have been? Questions? Okay, partial consecutive uh, squares is what we've got here, partial consecutive series, because it's only a part of the whole series, 1 to 17. And the number 16 was a fun one, uh, because we're finding the series from 1 to 14 for a complex algorithm, or actually it's not called an algorithm in a series, is it? If it were in a sequence, it'd be an algorithm. What's it called in a, or in a, yeah, what's it called in a series, class? Mm -hmm. The argument. It's the same basic idea. It's just called an argument now. What do I do with this thing that looks really complicated? Abby? Um, separate it out. Okay, to get? Good. We're going to use two distributive properties. First distributive property is split it up. Take the series of 3i squared, take the series of 4i. The second distributive property is to pull the 3 out to the front and the 4 out to the front so that we can use the n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 all over 6, and of course we'll also multiply that by the 3. And then uh, here we've got, what is it for, um, what does this uh, series of i stand for? What's the name for that? Anyone? Consecutive, <coughs> consecutive integers. Make sure you know your formulas. Uh, but uh, for just consecutive integers, what's the formula, anyone? N plus one all over two. Good, N plus one all over two. So a lot simpler than the consecutive squares. So we have 14 times 15 all over two. But of course, the four is here as well. And uh, we plug all that in. Final answer. Let's go back to Maddie. What did you get? Uh, it's not 1,295. Brandon? Uh, 3,465. 3,465 is correct. So uh, take a moment if you didn't get that, maybe recalculate some things and uh, make sure you're good to go there. Any questions on these series? It's been a little while since we've done these. Okay, we had a quiz with them and overall we handled the quiz really well, but it's been a little bit. Any questions on stuff we are going to see on the test tomorrow? Any questions on this? Yes, sir. Um, will you have like things where we have to put the actual formula? 
Um, I need to at least see, like, for instance, this much tells me you know the formula. So if you see that work. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's really good work. So yeah. you don't have to know the actual formula. You need to, well, you need to know this in your brain so you can do this with the numbers. Because I just jumped straight to that. And yeah, I, yeah. This still shows me, though, that you know n, n plus 1, and double plus 1, 2 right. n plus 1 all over 6. So it, it, you don't necessarily have to write this every single time. But if I can see that work, I know the numbers you used. That means I know the formula. So I really would prefer this. You could do both. I, need to see, I really, for your sake, need to see something just in case, you know, you punch something in wrong, you know, your button tries to hit the plus and you hit a minus button. I mean, all kinds of fluky things happen on a calculator. So for your sake, show the work. But great question. Good. Any other questions? Are there any that, before we get into the quiz review, which is the, the actual homework assignment, are, is there anything from the early part of the homework, the 2 through 16, to say, can we do another one like this? Yes, ma'am. The partial consecutive? No, let's do another partial consecutive uh, series. All right, so let's suppose I want the uh, series of i from 5 to 13. Let's do the series of i from 5 to 13 at your seats. Give you a minute or two head start, and then I'll work it out. What'd you get for your answer? Um, 85. 85. Right here. So you, did you split it up first of all into the 1 to 13 and the 1 to minus the 1 to 4? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you end up with the 13, 14 over 2, so a 91 for the first value? Yes. And then the second value, you ended up with a six here. So, oh, so you did three and four yeah. instead of four and five. Yeah. So starting with the 13, go one up 14. Start with the four, go up one five. So you kind of slipped back into that n minus one mentality that we use a lot in geometric work, not so much in the arithmetic. All right. Feel like you got it now, though? All right. Question. Any other questions on the stuff from the first half of the homework? Genesis, any other questions? Anyone else, any other questions on the early stuff? Again, not on the quiz today, but on the test tomorrow because I don't know that we'll have time to come back to it if we don't hit it now. All right, then let's move on to the back half of the homework. This is stuff you're going to see in just a few moments and, of course, on the test tomorrow. Number 18, we've got a geometric sequence. They start with 250, negative 1,500, 9,000, negative 54,000. Uh, first of all, it's going back and forth from positive to negative class. Alternating. alternating, and you know you're going to have an alternating geometric sequence anytime the... Well, yeah, the signs are switched, but what makes the sign switch? A negative common ratio. When the common ratio is negative, in this case, what is our common ratio class? Number 18. What's the common ratio? Well, but negative 6, right? It's alternating, so negative 6. So what is the next term in that geometric sequence going to be? Uh, Genesis? Good, positive 324,000 is correct. Uh, number 20, uh, we go from 5 down to only 5 sixths, down to a 536. What do we keep doing over and over again here on number 20? What is that common ratio? Audrey? Negative 20 to 5. Good, mul I'm sorry, so multiply. Five, five, six. Well, do we, are we multiplying the top by a 5 each time? 
The top is staying the same. It's really just the bottom being multiplied by a 6. So we would say we're multiplying by 1 sixth. Good. Dividing by 6 or multiplying by a 6. So what is the next term in the sequence? Good. Do you know the 5 is going to be? This really just multiply the bottom by a 6 to get 1,296. What type of sequence would that be, by the way, class, since the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller? Converging. Uh, geometric sequence there. Common ratio 1 to 6. And again, how do I find the common ratio? Like, sometimes it's just obvious. Other times you have to do some calculations. How do you find it, Kendall? Um, Good. Pick any number that they give you and divide by whatever comes right before it. Divide by previous, that'll give you common ratio. Uh, questions 18 or 20? How many of both of them correct? You're good on both 18 and 20. All right, makes sense now? All right. Number 22, you're finding the indicated term of a number in the sequence. What is the formula for a geometric sequence to find any number term? Abby? Um, a sub a equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus a. There we go. And uh, so, for instance, here in number 22, they want the eighth term. So we're finding a sub 8. Uh, the first term, of course, five. 5, the common ratio. 7, or wait. Number 22? 8. Number 22, the common ratio, oh, R. 6, I'm looking at 6, there we go. And then the R minus 1 means we're going to raise to the 7. 7th power there. Not sure why I didn't finish the 7. And so we get a really enormous number for the 8th term because it's getting bigger very quickly, Abby. 1,399,680. Good. 1,399,680. Number 24, we're finding the 7th term. So we're finding a sub 7. The first term, of course, here, Genesis? 6. six. six. And the common ratio? Six. Oh, I'm not looking for the answer. I'm just like, what's the common ratio in number 24? The R. Okay, on 24, take any number, preferably the 3, and divide it by the previous term. Divide by previous term. Okay, so we got a 6, we got a 3, we got a 3 halves, we got a 3 fourths, blah, 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 right? Take any number, divide it by the term that comes right before it. 3 6, or in other words, reduce it down. One half. By the way, technically you don't even have to reduce it, but I like to. So yeah, we're, we're basically cutting everything in half. Six to three, three to three halves, down to three fourths and so forth. We're going to raise it, remember, the n minus one power. So in this problem, we're going to raise this to the sixth power. And uh, what do we get for our answer on this one, Michael? 332. 332. 330 seconds is correct. Um, questions on either 22 or 24. Questions on either of those? How many got both of them correct? Got them both. All right, questions on either of those. We understand them now? Going to be able to do it in a few minutes on the quiz and tomorrow on the test? All right. Uh, number 26, is it converging or diverging? And how can we tell, Maddie? Good. They're approaching either infinity or negative infinity. Obviously, in this case, positive infinity. So diverging. Uh, number 28. Uh, finding the sum of the indicated number of terms. What do we call a sum of terms in a sequence class? Series. So we're basically finding a series of the first 10 terms. Would that be finite or infinite class? Finite, because we're only finding the sum of the first 10 terms. So we do S sub 10. What's the formula in general to find the sum of the first however many terms in a geometric sequence or a geometric finite series? Um, Audrey? There we go. So for number 28, we're finding the sum of the first 10 terms, S sub 10. Obviously, A sub 1 class is 12. Based on this algorithm that we have here, tells us that apparently we need a 12 right here. That's our first term. Now, uh, the common ratio apparently is a 4, because it's in that spot on 28. We're going to raise it to the 10th power, all over 1 minus 4. We plug it all into the calculator. With the calculator, do all the work. We get a really big sum here. What is the sum of those first 10 terms, Brandon? 4,194,300. Good. How many had 4,194,300? 
Only a few of us, a few of us didn't. Questions? Take a moment, plug it in the calculator, make sure you've got it now. While we're doing that, are there any questions on how to set it up? Or why to use what formula? Any questions? All right, looking at number 30, the sum of the first five terms. So, of course, S sub 5. This time, for our first term, we're going to plug in what? Genesis, go ahead. We'll, we'll come back to it in a moment. Uh, what do we plug in on number 30 for our first term? 8. eight. The uh, common ratio, 12. 12. And we're going to raise the 12 to the 5th power all over 1 minus 12, which, of course, is going to be a negative 11. Uh, we plug all of that onto the calculator. What did you get for your answer on 30? Hmm. No. Um, Maddie? No. Michael? I had 180,968. 180,968. So again, let me pause for just a minute and let you have a moment to plug these into the calculator. Because if the setup is right, obviously you're going to get a good portion of the credit. We want to be able to plug it in correctly as well. So take a moment, and if you're, need, if you're getting the right answer now that you re-plug it in, that's a good sign. If you're still getting the wrong answer, raise your hand, I'll come help you with the calculator. How many are good on 30? Okay, so we still got several people not. Did you get it now? Okay, so you got it, your calculator's not the problem. You got it now? Okay, so you're good. 180,968, not good. Are we plugging it in? No, it's on that one. Oh, okay. Careful. 1 minus the 5 is to the 12. Or the 12 is to the 5th. The 4 is to the 10th. So not 1 minus 4 to the 10th, but, oh. yeah, not in parentheses. So 1 minus 4 to the 10th. Mm -hmm. Then multiply that by the 12 and divide by the negative 3. Yeah, so exponent, notice exponent goes inside the parentheses because people, you know, Gavin, Brecken, future people watching on YouTube um, might also be struggling with the end goes inside the parentheses. Don't subtract and then raise to the power, raise to the power, then subtract it from the one. All right, do you have it now? All right, and you got it now? Okay, so we're good to go on this, at least as far as the calculator is concerned. Uh, number 32. Uh, we want to find the sum of the infinite geometric series defined and then identify as converging or diverging. So not the first however many terms, literally all the terms added together. Well, on number 32, what would you get if you added all those terms together going until the, well, it never ends, but all the terms theoretically in that sequence? Kendall? No finite sum. No finite sum because it's a rapidly diverging sequence there. So no finite sum. How about number 34? Uh, what did you get for that? Brandon? Uh, 270. It is 270, and we can find that sum because the series is, or the sequence is, converging. converging. It's getting smaller and smaller, closer towards zero. What's the formula we need to use to find the infinite sum of a converging sequence? S sub n equals a sub 1 all over 1 minus there we go, just knock off the, the hard parenthesis part. So we've got our a sub 1 is 180. The common ratio here, class? Well, common ratio is 1 third, 60 one eightieths, or 20 sixtieths. But 1 minus 1 third ends up giving us a 2 thirds. When we divide, that's where we get the 270. How many have 270 on number 34? No finite sum on 32? Questions on 32, 34. Do we need to see any like these? Any questions? Going once on questions. Going twice on questions. All right, clear desk except for a clean sheet of paper, a pencil, and a calculator. A clean sheet of paper, pencil, and a calculator. Everything else away. First lesson at the top of your paper along with today's date, which is 4-19-22. 4-19-22, today's date. And this is quiz 33. Quiz 33. Quiz 33. A pencil, paper, calculator, 
first and last name, 41922 today's date, and quiz 33. Uh, three questions at the beginning for you, uh, three formulas for you to match, and then uh, seven problems for you to solve. Follow the directions carefully. We'll resume the video after the quiz.